Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. I'm so happy to have you here. If you are tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from. My name is Sunny Leonard Easy. If we haven't met before, it is lovely to meet you. And I'm so excited to learn what you want to get out of today's live. Hi, Kayla. Um, Kayla and Connor from my team are here, and they're going to be helping out in the comments for anybody who's interested in uh, being part of our Authority Accelerator program and uh, being on the inside with Felicia and I. So I am talking to you. Hi, Jacob from Denmark. Um, hi, Robert from Wisconsin. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and for being here live. Kudos to all of you for taking the time out of your day to be here. It's going to be jam-packed. We've got lots to go over today and lots of things that you can start implementing into your business. So I'm really, really excited to share that with you. Uh, we have Derek from the Authority Accelerator is here. Hello. We have lots of our Authority Accelerator members here showing love to Felicia, who I'm going to be speaking to in just a second. Hi, Nicole. Nicole from my team. Hi, Cece from Arizona. Mikey Wilson from Toronto. Um, Karen is here. Hello, everyone. Af Afki from Dallas. Um, all right. Let's get into it. Um, so, I'm so excited today because we are going to be talking to one of our superstar clients, uh, Felicia Streeter, who is a part of our Authority Accelerator program. I wanted to give you a little bit of background. And if you are here tuning in, hi, Brittany, um, be sure to give this a like and be sure to share it out so that we can reach more people with this live today. And a little bit of background on Felicia. She's incredible and quite the spitfire. So I'm excited to talk to her today. And she is a government contracting consultant with 20 plus years of experience. And she specializes in helping small and minority business owners start and grow government contracting businesses. So pretty specific niche for sure. And she was looking for a step-by-step -step system to take her business from constant launch cycles and kind of hitting plateaus to going evergreen so that she could get consistent revenue month over month. So before I bring Felicia on, here are just a few of the things that have happened for her in her business since she joined the Authority Accelerator program back in March. She actually generated $50,000 in 30 days when she first enrolled in our program and le leveraged our pop launch strategy. And now her business is evergreen. She's crossed six figures with her online course and shifted away completely from doing live launches and from working one-on-one -on -one with clients. And she books consistent sales calls every month and is generating consistent revenue. We're going to talk about that and how she's been able to do that. And her YouTube channel has grown to 13,427 subscribers in less than seven months. So I am so pumped to bring Felicia on. Um, thanks, everyone, for saying hello. Karen, I can see in the comments. I can't actually see your face. Don't worry. You can only see Felicia and I. Um, <laughs> Uh, Keith, greetings from Alabama. Uh, Julie from Massachusetts. Awesome. So many people here. Rich from the UK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. All right. Without further ado, let's bring on Felicia. Hi, Felicia. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. You're muted. I'm just going to go ahead and unmute you. Oh, you have to unmute your own mic. There we go. Let's do that first. There we go. Hi. There we go. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> we can hear you super awesome. well. Thank you so sure, much sure. for being here. We really, really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to dive into your story. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, and Felicia is in Texas. So there's some fellow uh, Texas people here yep. as well. So hello to all of you. Um, yep. All right, let's get into it, Felicia. Let's start with, let's give a little bit of background okay. and what brought you to the Authority Accelerator Program. So for me, I was looking at uh, really just getting more consistent with the cash flow because, yes, the launch was working, but it's like you have a start and an end date of the money coming in. And so even though you may have payments still, but you don't have new money coming in every month consistently. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things. And then two, um, having to do the same thing over and over, like you're telling people the same thing over and over Um and it's like, okay, there has to be a better way. Plus, there's only so many hours in a day, which means if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you can only take on so many clients at a time, which also caps your cash flow. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I know that you, when you joined us in the program, you were at a place where you're like, I know I need to make a change. What was, what was your sort of like 
tipping point when you were like, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to shift my business model. For me, it was like one of the things was a small business. So I don't have like hundreds of thousands of people following me, first of all. So when we do the numbers, which, you know, you always talk about the numbers and I wasn't tracking them before, but I do now. But I did know, like, if I don't have hundreds of thousands of people following me, it's hard to do a launch and say, okay, we're going to do it for this period of time, then shut it down. Because I just, you can't get the numbers that way. You know, it just didn't work. And so for me, I knew I needed something where I could have a continuous flow of cash flow, but also have like that open enrollment where people can sign up at any time. Absolutely. Create real consistency. I think that's the thing, right? Is yeah. There. So if you aren't familiar, and you can let us know in the comments, if you aren't familiar with what a launch model is, it is essentially you create urgency around opening your business for a short period of time, and then you close it down. So you have a short window to be able to bring in revenue and sales. And it's a model that can create a lot of stress as a business owner and entrepreneur because <laughs> saw your eye roll there, um, because you don't, you don't know what the results are going to be all the, all the time. You don't know how many sales you're going to really be, be able to bring in. And then once it's done, it's done. And you have to wait a significant amount of time before you do another launch. And it can work sometimes if you have this really big, massive audience. But if you have a smaller audience, as you mentioned, it's really tough to get the numbers in that you need to make your business truly run. Am I correct on saying all of that? Yes. And it's a lot of work. You forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. So Felicia and I were talking right before we got on here and Felicia was saying, um, you have a new boyfriend, new ish. And, and he was saying that, um, it, was it him or you that said, I don't have to work all the time or something like that. I well, love that. Story. He so, said, I don't, but he does. He's like, I don't get to walk around my house all day and just do anything. And you know, this and that. And I'm like, but I do work. I swear I work. I, I promise you I do. And uh, just, my yeah. thing is, I always say, it doesn't take all day in our industry and what we do. And then with this being evergreen, it doesn't take all day to make money. Like, because I'm not shutting down the system at any given time, it's always running. And like you said, with things being evergreen, so it's always running, whether I'm there or not. I make money when I'm sleeping. I make money most of the time. And it's funny. I make a lot of money when I'm like not working. So <laughs> I don't know, whatever, you know, like when I'm out hanging out or, um, uh, just, just out, like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, cause you get the notifications, you know, yep. you know, we like to get those. So yeah. I mean, nothing better than a little email saying you've made X amount of dollars. Exactly. You just received a payment of X amount of dollars. Yeah. I mean, same thing. I was on vacation two weeks ago and I'm on the beach and I'm like, well, would you look at that? So it's, and it does get glamorized and glorified, but it's doable and, and you're living proof of that. And I think what's so cool to see with your journey is that it obviously didn't start that way. And you were right. working really, really hard. You're trading your time for money. You were doing one-on-one -on -one work um, and you were doing these launches. And so yeah. I guess for people who are kind of new to this and unfamiliar with it, what would you say were the biggest pain points for you when you were in that position in your business? Like what was the most frustrating aspect of the launches, the one-on-one, -on -one, all of that stuff? One-on-one -on -one was that, and this is funny, but what I realized too, people get a better transformation when they're in that group setting for some reason, I don't know why, but the one-on-one, -on -one, it was like, they just, they, they weren't as committed either. I don't, I don't know what it was, but they just didn't, I don't know. I can't put a finger on it. All I know is my group people get better results uh, than the one-on-one -on -one did. And I don't know if, I don't know. I don't, I don't know I, what that I was will, about. I don't yeah. know. I can, I can add to that and I will echo that wholeheartedly. And I know there are people here who are running one-on-one -on -one businesses or done for you businesses. Cause you were also doing this as a service before, right? Yes. So you were doing yes. it for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it so, worked as long as I did it. Yeah. It worked as long as you did it. Yeah. And so yeah. I can relate to that so much. And if you run a done for you service or you're doing one-on-one -on -one work, feel free to let us know in the comments. When I first started my business, that was what I fell into as well. And I was doing, um, social media management. And I was actually running campaigns and running accounts for my clients. Um, and then I also was doing one-on-one -on -one consulting as well. And I can tell you from my experience in this, the results that we now have in the Authority Accelerator program, which is an online program, 
are far and above anything that ever happened in my one-on-one -on -one or in my done for you. And the reason is this, it's exactly what you just said. It works as long as you are doing you the work. work. Yeah. So it's a job. It's not a business. It's a job. Mm -hmm. And also when people are hiring you one-on-one, -on -one, they're hiring you one-on-one -on -one because there's a certain level of expectation that you're going to solve their problem. Instead of them going, okay, I now have the blueprint. I now have what I need. It's been handed to me. It's up to me to do the work. So the mm -hmm. level of accountability is sky high when it's done in this format, when you create an online program, taking all the things that you repeat over and over and over again, and all the strategies you repeat over and over and over again, and putting them into an online program that people can then take and implement for themselves, which also creates a legacy business. Because yeah. it allows your income and your impact to be detached from the amount of time you're putting into it, which is why you're able to make money while you sleep and all that stuff. So it's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear that. Uh, and I wanted to let you know, so if you are just tuning in, we have an amazing amount of people here right now. So thank you so much for being here. Um, close to 100 people. Awesome. Oh, cool. uh, tuning in live, which is great. So um, if you're just tuning in, Felicia is a member of our Authority Accelerator program. And she came into the program because she was doing done for you services. And she was working one on one with clients. And she was doing launches um, in order to grow her business. And she was feeling stuck and frustrated by that model. So she wanted to turn her business completely evergreen, which she's been able to do. Um, and if you are interested in the Authority Accelerator program, I'm going to keep this link up on the screen. You can go here to apply. And Connor and Kayla from my team are here. And if you drop the word apply into the comments, they will reach out to you via Facebook Messenger to chat with you and see if this is a fit um, and help you kind of work through the decision. So um, just wanted to mention that as well. Okay. So let's tackle why this niche for you. Because I always find this part interesting and I do find people get really stuck on what direction to go in their business, mm -hmm. what niche they should pick, all of these things. Where is this niche coming from for you? So for me, it was, um, well, okay. So in my previous marriage, it was like, we had two mixture. I had the business sense. He had the construction sense. Okay. And so uh, when he got out the military, there was a company he worked for and they introduced government contracting to us. It's amazing that a lot of people don't understand or even know about government contracting. And we didn't either until someone told us about it. But with that, we, so our business is successful. We're doing construction, you know, doing multi-million dollar contracts every year. And the SBA and the women's business council, the uh, people over those two were like, why don't you start another business? And I was like, doing what? I'm busy over here doing construction stuff. <laughs> Very busy. And they were like teaching people what you did to grow that business. So in turn, I then created the business that I have today, which I really love teaching and training anyway. And so that's what got me into doing this. But I still resisted and was still doing that. And then I think I did a video one time on YouTube, YouTube, y'all. Yeah. And like, it's really, really old. But people started finding it over time and they would ask me to help them with government contracting. And so really that's the transition that got me to really doing this full time is that people just asked for it. I love it. I love it. And that's the thing. Like, I think oftentimes when people are getting started and they're trying to uncover their niche, and I'm sure you see this a lot, mm -hmm. um, it's that they they go so far outside of themselves and they look at yeah. what other people are doing and they're like, oh, I should do that because it was successful for somebody else. Mm -hmm. The reality is oftentimes it's the, it's the thing that people ask you for help with that is the gold in what you're supposed to start your business around. So right. that really is a good testament of how naturally and organically this business came to you. Um, and obviously you're very good at what you do and you're super passionate yeah. about what you do, which shows through in your results and your clients and all of those things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it was strange. I didn't have a business model even to follow with that. Um, I think it's more people doing similar to what I do now, not still, they don't go as in depth, but they do the foundational things and that's it. But when I started, they it wasn't that many people. It's more now, but yeah. So yeah. I had nothing to bounce it off of. So I, yeah, I had to just go off of what I knew for real. 
<laughs> totally. And kind of, yeah. well, test, fail, learn, grow, repeat. And you, fig yeah, and you yeah, figured yeah. it out. There Your you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I want to get into some tactics that really made a okay. massive difference in your transition from where you were at to where you're at now, which is a really consistent evergreen mm -hmm. business that allows you to make money when you're not working. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the couple of things I want to go over. One is um, the transformation of going from one-on-one -on -one to a group program and mm -hmm. solely having that because you don't work with one-on-one -on -one clients anymore, correct? Correct. Sure don't. Okay. I sure don't. Uh, <laughs> and number two hey, is- hey, hey, still, but no. That's of no. course. Of course. Yeah. Number two is knowing your ideal client. I think mm -hmm. that's super important to tackle because I remember having a conversation with you and you were like, Sunny, I already know my ideal client. I'm fine. <laughs> Right, right. And, and then we went through the exercise and you were like, maybe I didn't know them as well as I thought I did. Um, and then systems and metrics to create that consistency yeah. that you have now. So, um, and also I wanted to preface this by saying as well, which I know some people here tuning in will know this, but this is all done without any paid advertising at all. This is completely mm -hmm. organic. Um, and that's a beautiful thing because it leads to much higher profit margins for your business. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Let's tackle the transition of going from one-on-one -on -one to a group program. And I think the best place to start for this, because it's such a hurdle for so many people, is your mindset. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it was so hard for you to make that transition? And what was holding you back, do you feel like? I think it's because we look at it, you think about it, one-on-one, -on -one, we can charge more. You know, that's what we're told. Yeah. We can charge more one-on-one. -on -one. And it's like... When you get into any type of coaching, and if we're looking at social media and all these different things, they say, okay, start with one-on-one -on -one or start with a service, one of the two. And, and you know, and they're like, you can charge more doing it that way. It's a much easier way to get started and things like that. And really, now that I think about it, I didn't think about this, not so much because with your program and the way we transition from doing the ICAs to the POP, it was just as easy because we didn't have to create anything beforehand either. So, but I mean, you know, if we didn't have you, we wouldn't know that. So most people <laughs> don't know that. So, but yeah, but that's, that's what they said. Like, yeah, you had like start one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Well, and I think one thing I wanted to touch on that too is, and if you, you are in that position and you're like, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one or I'm thinking one-on-one -on -one's the answer. The other thing you want to think about is this, is that when you are working with people in silos, you are really creating a limit to the amount of impact that you can create and the results that you can create. And it diminishes your growth as a business because if you don't have client results and social proof of what you're doing, the business is going to take longer to grow. And if you're working with one person at a time, think about how much longer that takes to get results through the door. And the, the analogy that I use is it would be like a university taking mm -hmm. one student a year. Imagine if that was the case. That would take so long to get people to their degree and the mm -hmm. impact they want to create in the world. And so I understand the mentality behind it because it's something that I did way back in the day. But if I could start my business over, which is why I created the Authority Accelerator, I would start here because it fast tracks your confidence in your business and in your program. It fast tracks your client results um, and it does fast track your cash flow as well, which allows you to grow from a place of abundance. Um, so that was kind of your your fear around it. Mm -hmm. What was what were some of the tactics that you implemented from the methodology to get you from the place of one on one to going into a group setting? So what I did is I I realized, like I said, one of the things was a lot of the things that I was doing in the service and one on one. It was, it was like, it was a system. It was the same yep. steps over and over every time that I took the people through the same thing. And so I realized like, okay, if I could put this, you know, on in a package in some videos or whatever, then I could get some time back, but I could also reach more people and help more people because the one-on-one -on -one is like, say you take 10 clients, you know, and depending on how many hours you spend with them, you know, you're, you'll max out at 10, 15 people real quick and get burnout. And and then if you're charging a certain amount, whatever it is, that's it. That's, that's all you can make. You're capped. And so I just realized that I could put something together into a system and then service more people. And then, you know, um, 
when I found you and then seeing, okay, we can put them in a group and we can do these things. I don't have to launch all the time. And so it really allows me to focus on serving the clients and not even the tactic part of it, because we can talk more strategy, which is where they really need the help. The yes. tactics, the steps are what they are, you know, but strategy and things specific to the individual, because you can still do that in the group setting. And people ask me that all the time. It's like, well, will I get um, your help in the group? And I'm like, yeah, everybody gets their time to shine, you know, so you get to ask your questions and things like that, just like in your program, you know, uh, and that's one of the things that amazed me is because um, I've done other programs and I've had some where I didn't get to ask ever. Well, I asked the question. They just never got answered. Mm. And but one of the things in your program and I was amazed. And it's you, you know, it's you for real. And so you <laughs> answer the question. It's me for real. This is not a hologram. It's actually me. I'm telling you <laughs> because, you know, you think you're getting one person and you get somebody else when you get in some of these programs. But we were able to ask you the questions you know, and, and get your take on it and strategy, you know, because your the tactics and the steps are laid out, but, you know, sometimes we have those questions specific to our needs. And so, yeah, I think that's so important transition to that. Yeah. I think that's so important. And I think for anybody watching who is in a place where they have a business and they're not consistent, they don't have evergreen. Um, they're not able to really scale right now because they're trading their time for money. One of the best and easiest places to start by the way, I wanted to shout out Gita because Gita is a part of the Authority Accelerator. So thank you, Gita, for being here. Um, one of the best places to start is exactly what Felicia just said. And this is also exactly how I started my online course business. Take note of all of the things that you repeat over and over and over again to your clients and all of the things that are necessary to get results for your clients because every single one of those things can be packaged into a system and a method. And this is a really morbid question, but I ask almost every single person who comes into the Authority Accelerator this question, and it's great to start thinking about it. If you were to die tomorrow, how could your business still make an impact? That's why we call it a legacy business because God forbid if something were to happen to me, my business could still live on. My strategies, my methods could still live on without relying on me. And that is a true business. That is something that can run without you. Something that requires your time and energy to run is a job. It's not a business. So I think if you're going to start somewhere, and this is really big takeaway from today's training, is Start at a place where you start documenting all the things that you repeat over and over again to clients or that you do on a consistent basis repeatedly to get results because those are things that you can package into a curriculum that people can study on their own and implement for themselves and create long-term results and success without having to rely on you to get the results they're looking for. Um, I love it. Miranda says, wow, that makes makes more sense. Um so Brenda actually just asked, um, she said, how did you refine your ideal client? So I want to talk about this because That's I think this question. is so interesting. And this is the next thing I wanted to touch on is that you, I mean, you had a business, right? You had a business prior to joining the Authority Accelerator. Mm -hmm. um, and you had an idea of your, who your ideal client was. Right. And we had that conversation. You were like, I know my ideal client, but I'm still going to do the work. <laughs> Bless you for doing it, doing it, because it always makes a difference. Um, <laughs> let's talk through how you refined it and how you got more specific. So I, I thought I knew who my ideal client was, and I kind of did, you know, somewhat. But to really nail it down, I think that's what made the difference and got me uh, with that pop where I did fifty thousand. And mm -hmm. so, but to get there, what we what you have us do inside the program is our ICA interviews. And so it's not a sales conversation, but it is a conversation with who, well, who, kind of people we think is our ideal client because we, you know, uh, invite people to have the conversation with us. And so they self-select themselves at that point to have the conversation. So for me, they know they're interested in government contracting. So, okay, from there, asking them specific questions that you give us, which is great because some of them, most of them probably I never thought to ask, but you gave us those. <laughs> And then the documentation of what they're saying, how that conversation is flowing, and the keywords that they're giving us um, really solidify who my ideal client was. And so taking that information, 
it, it helps two things the ICA calls take that information and then I can use it for social media posts and, and various things to attract my ideal client. And, you know, I have a big uh, presence on YouTube, which that was from Sunny's course too. And so, <laughs> but, but I can now do the videos and different things. I mean, cause they're telling me exactly what they want to know, what they uh, don't know, where they're at in the process, which may create content and all that stuff a lot easier. But here's the kicker. So we did the ICA calls, but it also now these people, the ones that were ideal, you know, for my program and based on the conversation, I in turn had sales calls with those people. Now for me, I think I had, I did, so it's 50 ICA calls and probably, I don't remember the number. Because I didn't invite everybody to the sales call because some no. wasn't a fit based on no. doing that call. But I had a high number. Yeah, I, I did have a high number from the ICA calls that I could transition into the sales call. And so that that was a game changer. And and what I even realized, I said, you know, that's probably something it's almost like you can use it really as a marketing strategy 100%. every now and then yeah so 100%. my plan is to right every so often revisit that and do yes. this 50 ICAs because then it kind of generates some sales calls it, as well well but and that's more high ticket or more specific more what's that word you use they're more uh I forget what you say what did uh, I say Maybe I ideal. Or They're something. ideal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More ideal. I think that's the thing. So you said so many things there that I just want to like recap and touch <laughs> on because that was perfect is – so. I think the biggest mistake people make when they think about an ideal client for their business is they think about a category. So you're like, okay, mm -hmm. well, anybody who wants to start a government contracting business is my ideal client but they're not really. And I say this often, anybody who's in the authority accelerator is going to be like, oh God, here she goes again. But what I say is – what we have learned in working with thousands of people in this program to get their courses from just a hint of an idea to actually becoming this fully automated business is that your ideal client and the person that you want to serve and the most successful courses come down to three factors. You have to know who your one specific ideal client is and where specifically they're at on their journey where they're most likely to invest with you. Because everybody has a tipping point of when they're actually ready to do the work and make a change. And you don't really mm -hmm. want to talk to people or deal with people who are not there. So one specific ideal client at one specific place on their journey seeking one specific transformation. And the reason those three factors are so vitally important to creating a highly scalable and consistent online course business is because when you're trying to work with everybody, you're constantly having to customize to each person at each different stage on their journey. So when you get laser focused, it makes you wildly magnetic. And when you do the work to actually talk to these people, like you said, it builds the foundation of everything you do. The reason that we put our clients through that process is because it's essentially a boot camp. So you never run out of leads ever again. You are armed with exactly what you need to always be able to build more leads, more clients, and get more people in the door so you can create an even bigger impact. And it's not requiring a funnel. It's not requiring right. tech. It's not requiring anything fancy. So if things go sideways, you still know exactly how to get people in the door, which is so, so, so important as a business owner. So you you totally described it perfectly. You also mentioned one thing, which was YouTube, which you have a YouTube mm -hmm. channel and you took a break from it, which we do recommend doing so that you can get super clear on who you're trying to serve. Because on YouTube, in order to actually grow, the algorithm needs to know who are you talking to? Who's your ideal client? And what do you want to be known for? So I thought this was really cool because you posted this in June and you said, I haven't posted mm -hmm. a thing on social media since yeah. joining the program um, in March. And you passed 10,000 subscribers because the content you had posted mm -hmm. was still being found in search and it was still being discovered, which is really cool to see. Right. And it's continuing to grow, right? Correct. And that was... Um your old program, but now it's inside the authority accelerator. I think it's what yeah. phase three, the phase, three. Or phase three. three. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's what I use to get there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think it, when it comes to refining your ideal client and even this conversation, like I think there's so much focus on creating complication in your business, especially with the online space. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, you need to be doing bots. You need to be doing all of these things. You need to have messenger chat. You need to have funnels. You need to have all this fancy stuff. At the end of the day, 
I know this is shocking. It makes makes me sound <laughs> old. Businesses used to be run just by building relationships. Mm-hmm. So that is the basis of how you build a long-term business. Yes, all the rest of it can come in handy, but if you don't know who you're talking to, how they want to be spoken to, how they think, and how you want to market to them, none of the other stuff's going to work. Right. Your emails aren't going to work. Your copy's not going to work. Nothing else is going to work. So it's really a found- foundational exercise to build your right. entire business. And I, also- I think I used the three things that you said, YouTube, and then I started using Instagram because you talked about that in Authority Accelerator. Yep. And my email list, that's really it. Like yep. I may be on the other social medias, but not so much. You just need not- to know which lever. That's what I always say. I'm like, mm-hmm. you. we put you through a process in the very first part of the Authority Accelerator to basically understand, okay, for my specific business and how I want to operate, what are the levers I need to pull to continue to make money and to make an Mm -hmm. impact. And you identify it through doing all of this testing. And so it's not, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like ours are very, very simple. Um, And when you know those, it becomes a repeatable process and a predictable process to know how much revenue you're going to generate on a monthly Mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned something else where people are probably like, okay, I have heard of that. And some people are going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about, which is the pop. And I do want to touch on that. Um, But I also just wanted to say and remind everyone here, so if you're just tuning in, welcome. We have over 100 people here live, which is amazing, and a lot of Authority Accelerator members, so welcome, welcome. Um, So Felicia is a member of Authority Accelerator program. She was doing done for you, one-on-one work, um, and launches, and she wanted to figure out how to create a predictable and consistent business and turn it evergreen um, and package her knowledge into an online course. So she's been able to do that. She's had phenomenal results, and I'm going to get into the kickoff of that in just a second here. But if you're interested in applying for the Authority Accelerator, there's a link on the screen right now. But also, Connor and Kayla are working hard in the chat right now. And so if you drop the word apply in the comments, Connor and Kayla from my team will reach out to you um, so they can have, a, can have a conversation with you about if this is an alignment and a fit for you and how we can best support you. Um, so just drop the word apply um, if you want to speak with Connor or Kayla um, and they'll get in touch. So let's talk about your, your pop. Um, mm-hmm. I think I have an image here. Let's just see. Um, <laughs> let's see do, I have, do you want to have the image? Wait, wait, wait. Pop launch recap. Yes. So let's talk about this. So if you aren't familiar with a pop, I'm going to bring that up in a second again. The pop is a method essentially that I created in order to get our clients the three foundational things that you need to really kick off a business. Cash flow. So you're building your business from a place of security and safety. Um, and you're not constantly chasing your next client and stressed out all the time. Confidence in your offer, because raise your hand if you're terrified of selling. <laughs> A lot of people are. I so used to be. Hit you. <laughs> yeah, you used to be. Not anymore. Um, so confidence in selling your offer and confidence in knowing your offer is really good. Um, and then the final thing is client results. So getting those three things as quickly as possible I've often mentioned this. I learned this really from Steve Jobs, who with the iPhone was like, I need to get this thing to market to figure out if if it even works and if people even like it. And then I'll use the feedback to make it even better over time. Mm -hmm. And now we're on the 13th iteration of it. So your program can always get better with time, but you want to launch it fast, test it fast, and evolve with time. So the pop is the first thing you do before you turn your business evergreen. So with your pop, I actually think you are the biggest pop we've seen. So you did $50,000 with your pop launch in 30 days, people, 30 days. So she did all the foundational and fundamental work that we talked about and identifying and refining her ideal client. Her niche is government contractor accelerator um, for small business owners. And she sold 13 units at a price of $4,000 and generated $50,000 in revenue and collected $34,000 in cash. So let's talk about the pop and the impact that it had on you and your business. So I think the pop revealed a lot of things, really. Um, It is solidified that, okay, this process of one packaging it putting into a group program solely can work and that I can make the income that I wanted to make but it also gives me the ability to to uh, continue to increase my revenue because I don't have a cap on how many people I can take at a time I don't have an end date um, 
where, okay, if you miss it, you just have to wait till two, three months down the road. Uh, because sometimes people aren't ready or, you know, they just don't have the money to make the investment today, but they will come back. Let me tell you, they come back. Yes, they do. And so, but that's the great thing about having an evergreen where they can come in at any time because when they come back, then they can actually join versus, oh no, you have to wait another month or two because we're not launching yet. So that was really, really great. But also um, getting feedback because the way we do the pop is it's live. And that's why I said the transition is really easy. It's no different than one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not like you have to have a whole bunch of stuff created. And so it allows you to uh, be able to put out the content and then get feedback every week. And then before you make it evergreen, you can make whatever changes you need to make so that it is what you want it to be and it gets the clients the results that you want them to get. And then the pop also tells you whether it's working because people get results, you know, depending on your program, of course, but people get the results as you um, are going through it, like week from week, you know, you can do the check in and say, you know, what successes they've had. And I think it's a, a little phrase or something you, you know, also gave us to steal from you to, to even pull out those uh, yes. results from them because sometimes people are a little shy or they just don't <laughs> think to share it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I was just talking to a client last week, actually, who um, joined like a year ago. And I was like, th wh what happened? And uh, we were talking so much in the beginning, they had all this momentum. And then I messaged them. I was like, hey, just want to check and see how it's going. And they're like, oh, it's going super well. We just didn't think to update you. And I was like, no, yeah. I live for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So people do get shy. But but when you have the process in place to really get those testimonials and feedback, it it build so much confidence for you, but it also gives mm -hmm. you great marketing material to be like, look right. what happened. Look at what my, my program's doing. Um, I wanted to also shout out Lakeisha, who's in the program as well. And she said, I'm launching my new pop to put new investors yeah. on the path to financial freedom. So way to go, Lakeisha. Yeah. Um, she's in the authority accelerator as well. So um, the pop, it, it really does. It, it kicks things off in a big way. And for you, it kicked things off in a massive way. But the yes. real gold and the thing I want to talk about next, which is the kind of like final tactical thing that I wanted to touch on is mm -hmm. you are now totally evergreen. Yes. You, you are not doing launches. You are not working with one-on-one -on -one clients. And you joined in March. So this has been a pretty like significant shift and transformation mm -hmm. in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And on a monthly basis, if you feel comfortable sharing, you don't have to. How much are you generating now with your business? Sure. On, on a consistent basis, anywhere from 15 to 20, sometimes even more than that a month. So Yay! It just yeah. Which is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. And when you compare that to the launch model for you, what's the difference? Like, how does that make you feel that you're now oh. at this place where you know predictably what you're making every month? It's a game changer. I mean, shoot, we all like money. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's like you know for me it, it gets to a point like it's a game that I play with myself like because again the one-on-one -on -one, I was capped until yeah I was capped because you know one-on-one -on -one, it's like okay we're gonna work together for three months six months whatever you're locked into that and that price and so the difference with this is like okay last month I did this I can say, okay, next month, my goal is this, you know, and, and I gauge it, you know, uh, how many sales calls I have, all of that. But I can always say it can go up because I'm not capped on how many people I can serve. Yes. And then with everything being evergreen, I mean, my biggest focus is doing my YouTube, which I have back in help with that. But I, you know, the videos and then uh, the sales calls. Yeah. So I have time to do the all of that. Because the other thing too, if you think about it with the one on one, if you're maxed out there how many even if you could take on more people when do you have time to talk to them to sign them up right right that makes total yeah. sense yeah i mean it's just i think the thing i i just look at it on the basic level of like time and mm -hmm you you have a limited amount of it yeah, um yeah. and when you're doing one-on-one -on -one calls and those are kind of unpredictable and let's say mm -hmm. that's taking 10 to 15 hours a week and then on top of that you're also trying to do your marketing your sales you're trying to get people in the door you're doing customer service you're doing all the other pillars of a business mm -hmm. it le it leads to a certain level of like just exhaustion did you ever feel burnt out when you were when you were working in that other oh, sort yeah. Of model yeah all the time and yeah. and it gets it gets I don't know what's the feeling, but when you're doing all those things and you're maxed out with your one on one, 
and you want to make more, but you can't because yeah. you just don't have capacity. It's only so many hours in a day. And I mean, you hear things where, you know, some people say, oh, you should get up real early and work all day and 40, 50, all these hours. Yeah, who wants to do that? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, I, you know, we do what we have to do, you know. Of course. And it ebbs to? and flows. Yeah. If you want right. to, that's the thing, right? And and I think a big part of like what makes the community inside of the Authority Accelerator really magical is everyone has a different definition of success. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's just making $5,000 a month. For yes. some people, you know, we have clients who are all the way up to $250,000 a month, $300,000 mm -hmm. a month, which is who I spoke to actually last month. If you want to check right. it out on my Facebook page, that's Brandon. But everyone has a different level of, or definition of success. And for me, it's always been peace. Mm -hmm. I just want to feel at peace and I want to have space and I want to have time with the things and the people that matter most to me. And right. I'm so happy that you're now at a place that you, you've you been able to achieve that. How important were the systems? And I know this freaks people out, but systems and the numbers and metrics that we lay out in the program for you to create consistency in your business. Oh, very important. I mean, I know numbers are important. So I always say your numbers, you know, like how much are you making, right? But how are you making that money is, is really the question because it entails what's working and what's not working. And so one of the things I really liked in the program is the sales tracker that you give us because it has the formulas in there and everything. So it's kind of like a plug and play. We just have to put in the information. It tells us how many people you need to talk to to get to your income goal, you know, because it tells you as long as you're doing the work and putting the information in there, which isn't hard it tells you your conversion rates and, and things like that. So that's a real game changer. That, that one piece there for sure uh, was really, really helpful. Yeah. And, and I think that's the big key here is that business shouldn't be, it is of course at times, but it shouldn't be emotional. When you know your mm -hmm. numbers, it allows you to stay out of the emotion of the highs and the lows and the roller coaster. And it allows you to predict and project your future. And right. how much money you want to make on a monthly basis. And the cool thing for you now is like you're now doing, you know, 15 to 20K a month. You know you could do more if you wanted to. Like you now know exactly right. what you need to do on a monthly basis if you want to grow that. And exactly. having that is powerful because it it keeps you in the CEO seat mm -hmm. instead of being at the whim of what's happening around you or what's happening externally. How important right. has that been for you and your peace of mind? Oh, very, very important because the, the numbers don't lie. Like numbers yeah. don't lie. I don't care how you slice it. And so knowing that I know bare minimum, I'll make this every month, like clockwork. And that's like the bare minimum work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so if you amp it up and, and amping it up still doesn't mean that I'm working, you know, 15 hours a day. That's not what I mean at all. Yeah. But just, you know, amping it up, you know, maybe it's an extra webinar a month and that only takes an hour. Yeah. So that's one, another thing, like, you know, the webinar formula that you give us what to put into the webinar and things like that, like that works. That's a game changer because whenever I go live, whether I go on YouTube or do a webinar, I'm making money. Absolutely. Like it's a given. Yeah, it's I'm a given. So that's money. a little yeah. bonus on top of the evergreen yeah. machine that's working in the background. And we mm -hmm. talk about that, right? Is like any business really requires what we call on demand and evergreen attraction methods. So evergreen means that you are literally bringing in clients on autopilot, as Felicia mentioned, when you're sleeping, when you're not working, clients are rolling in, those little payment notifications are coming up at all times. Mm -hmm. But then there's on demand. So like, let's say you, you need to make a little push and you want to go a little harder one month. There's also all of these on-demand methods that you can use to immediately get the satisfaction and gratification of getting more people in the door. So it's really an ebb and flow and a combination of both, but the security of having something that's running consistently that you can rely on makes your life a lot easier when you are running a business. And I think my one of my last questions for you is, you've touched on the lifestyle piece of it, but when you think about your lifestyle now versus prior to March when you enrolled... How has it changed? How has it shifted for you? Oh, I have a lot more time for sure. A lot more free time just to, as they say, stop and smell the roses. Um, but really, I like the peace, you know, of knowing that I have stability, 
yeah. in, in my business and the financial stability. So, you know, not having to worry about income, can I pay my bills, things like that. But just for me, it's always been about um, freedom, flexibility and financial peace and then just yeah. peace in general. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, anything that you want to share before we kind of wrap up? And if there's any questions, I'm going to uh, make sure that we tackle those as well. But anything okay. you want to share before we wrap up? No, just that um, anyone that's watching, if you're thinking about, you know, joining the accelerator, because I was thinking and thinking and, and the total transparency, I think I didn't sign up initially immediately. And, you know, hindsight, you'd be like, oh, I wish I had it because then I could have been a whole lot further and things like that. Because I, 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 I was like, well, you know, I already know this. I know that this, this and that and I'm doing this. And I'm like, oh, do I really need that? But it was a game changer. And, and looking at it, too, looking at you, Sonny, and your program, and it was kind of like, how do I want my business to be? And so with that being said, you know, joining, want the evergreen model, things like that, which is what you have then who better to teach it to you? Because that's Thank what they're you. doing. Thank you. That's so nice. And I will say, like, if you're on the fence, if you're sitting there thinking about it, you in, you joined in March. Like, things have changed mm -hmm. pretty drastically for you for the better in a very short period of time. And why delay? You know, what's, right. what's holding you back? And I would really beg that question of anybody sitting here thinking this is something you want to do. We're starting a new year. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, this is the time to do it. This is the time to tackle it. So like I said, you can apply at the link right there, sunnylanderdizu.com slash apply. And you can also just put the word apply into the comments and Connor and Kayla will get in touch with you from my team, um, to see if this is a fit. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to you, Felicia, for your time. And also just sure. for being such a like North star inside the community mm -hmm. and the program. I know you've really, you've really been motivating and inspiring to a lot of people inside the program yeah. with all the success that you've had. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And one last thing, you said I joined in March, and I did that pop in April. Just yes, so that was in within April, the one month. freaking month. Yeah. yeah, one month you got that pop up and running, mm -hmm. and made fifty thousand dollars. Not yep. too freaking shabby. So return on <laughs> that's what they say ROI. What kind of ROI are you looking for? A big a big ass ROI. That's what I was. Right. Saying. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because the program didn't cost nearly that much. Exactly. No. <laughs> but well worth the investment for sure. Yeah, it's pretty pretty incredible. Thank you so much. I'm just checking to see if we have any questions. Um, okay. Holly, yes, we will keep this up, and I will also be sending out a replay um, to anyone who's on our email list. You'll be getting a replay this afternoon. Um, and like I said, if you have any sort of hesitations or anything, you let us know and put apply in the comments, and Connor and Kayla will be happy to hop on a call with you. Um, thank you so, so much, Felicia. You're freaking awesome. I can't wait oh, to see you. where you are even six months from now. I know. Holy smokes. I can't wait. What in the world? <laughs> we'll have to do another follow-up interview. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning right, in. Bye. Bye.